Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Shalom, Alakim. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, and that's where you go to support this mission of truth. There's also lots of devotionals there. Although, admittedly, I have not been able to get to writing them uh, for a couple of weeks, but there is a lot of content, a lot of devotional content there. Um, also, uh, we'll talk about this more in the future, but uh, we had to change up how we're doing the prayer wall and Q&A wall. Uh, so here soon, sometime in the next week or so, there'll be two blog posts that are posted that'll have, that'll be kind of sticky. And at the top, one will be for prayer, one will be for questions and answers. And uh, I'll release a video uh, sometime soon, uh, kind of talking about that a little bit more. Uh, but all that can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Well, today... By the way, the, did I mention the scripture I just read? Uh, that was, um, here, let me pull it back up. That was 2 Timothy 1.9. Let me just read it again. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. 2 Timothy 1.9. And if you're curious, a lot of times I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just reading this, the verse of the day from the Bible app, which is a free download on your cell phone, uh, whether you have an iPhone or an Android or whatever. And so a lot of times uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just reading the verse of the day to start the podcast off. Uh, so if you're curious, and I usually post the verse of the day uh, on the Facebook page too, if you're following the Facebook page. So uh, just... So you know. Um, All right, so today we're getting back to our wisdom and encouragement from the Psalms and Proverbs, and we're ready for chapter 31. It's hard to believe that we've already done 30 weeks throughout since we started this, uh, the Psalms and the Proverbs. Uh, So we're going to read Psalm 31, and today I'm going to read Psalm 31 out of the Hallelujah Scriptures. Um, I know some of you really love to hear it, uh, hear some of those... um, uh, some of those uh, Hebraic words, um, and the name of God. And in this particular psalm, David uses the name of God many, many times. As a matter of fact, if you're looking at it in the King James Bible, you'll see the O Lord, capital L-O-R-D, many, many times. And when you see that in the King James Bible, that's telling you. And the King James Bible is one of the only ones that I know of that actually at least lets you know uh, so in that Bible, when you see the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's letting you know that right there is the name of God, yod heh vav heh. And yeah, we may disagree on how it's pronounced and things like that. Um, no one knows for sure. Um, I believe it's Yehovah based on manuscript stuff. Um, but there's other people that have other opinions. And uh, that's okay. You know what? I think God just appreciates the effort, right? I think he just appreciates the effort. You know, it's interesting because the scriptures say, uh, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe we read that out of Acts chapter 2 just a few days ago, where Peter's quoting the book of Joel. Well, in the book of Joel, in the actual Hebrew, it doesn't say Lord. It actually says, whoever shall call upon the name of Yehovah shall be saved. And so I think there is going to be a growing knowledge of this name, possibly. Possibly. Um, of course, the name that's been given above all names is Jesus, right? Yeshua. That's the name above all names. That's the name, the only name under heaven for which we are saved. Uh, so it's kind of like, hey, what's going on here? Um, and I believe it all makes sense to us in the end. Obviously, we're saved in the name of Jesus. But I don't think God wants us to not know uh, what he has been called throughout history. Or maybe he does. Maybe that's why we're confused about it. But I think he appreciates the effort, nonetheless. All right. I feel like I've done a lot of rambling this morning. Let's get started. Let's look at the script. Let's just listen to what God has to say instead of what Sean has to say. 
Let's go to Psalm 31. I'm going to read this from the Holy Scriptures, and then we'll read Proverbs 31 from the uh, King James Bible. Let's begin. To the chief singer, a psalm of Dawid. In you, O Yehovah, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be a rock of refuge to me, a house of defense to save me. You are my rock and my stronghold. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Bring me out of the net which they have hidden for me. For you are my stronghold, and into your spirit, into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Yehovah, El of truth. That means God of truth. I have hated those things. I have hated those who observe lying vanities, but I trust in Yehovah. I exalt and rejoice in your kindness. For you have seen my affliction, you have known the distresses of my life. And you have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have stood my feet in a large place. Show me favor, O Yehovah, for I am in distress. My eye, my being, and my body have become old with grief. For my life is consumed in sorrow, and my years in sighing, my strength fails because of my wickedness. And my bones have become old. I am a reproach among all my adversaries, but most of all, among my neighbors. And I dread to my friends, those who see me outside flee from me. I have been forgotten from the heart like someone dead. I have been like a missing vessel. For I hear the evil report of many. Fear is from all around when they take counsel together against me. They plot to take away my life. But I have put my trust in you, O Yehovah. I have said you are my Elohim. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who pursue me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Do not let me be ashamed, O Yehovah, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silenced in the grave. Let lips of falsehood be steeled, which speak reckless against the righteous with pride and scorn. How great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those revering you, which you have prepared for those who are taking refuge in you, in the sight of the sons of men. In the secrecy of your presence you shall hide them from all you shall hide them from the plots of man, you shelter them in a booth from the strife of tongues. Baruch be Yahovah, that is to say, blessed be the Lord. For he has made marvelous his kindness to me in a strong city. And I, I have said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Yet you heard the voice of my prayers when I cried out to you. Love Yehovah, all you kind ones. For Yehovah guards the trustworthy ones and exceedingly repays the doer of pride. Be strong and let him strengthen your heart, all you who are waiting for Yehovah. That is Psalm 31, and man, is that a powerful one. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. There's so much that we could talk about. You know, he, he's going through this period of just distress and grief where he just feels like everyone is against him, right? The whole world is against him. Let's just read his distress a little, one more time. He says, Show me favor, O Yehovah, for I am in distress. My eye... My being and my body have become old with grief. For my life is consumed in sorrows and my years in sighing. My strength fails because of my wickedness. And my bones have become old. Maybe some of you and I myself have felt this way at times. Where you're just like, gosh, it's just never ending. Wondering if there really is a light at the end of the tunnel. 
I'm I'm falling apart not only because of all the things going on in my life, but because of my own flesh. Can't even act right, much less not be treated miserably by others. Maybe some of you have felt like that. He's saying, I'm a reproach among all my adversaries, but most of all to the people around me, right? To my neighbors. I'm a dread to my friends. I feel like I've been forgotten. Like someone who's dead. I hear the evil reports of many. He's saying, I hear the gossip. I hear what they're saying about me. But. He says, but I... But I have put my trust in you, O Yehovah, and I have said that you are my Elohim. He's saying, I've put my trust in the Lord. I've said he is going to be my God, and my times are in his hands. He says, my times are in your hands. He said, no, you know, no matter what they're plotting, it's not up to them. The Lord decides, my times are in your hand. And he begins to remind himself of some truth. He says, deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who pursue me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Do not let me be ashamed, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silenced in the grave. And he reminds himself of how good God is. How great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those revering you, which you have prepared for those taking refuge in you in the sight of the sons of men. In the secrecy of your presence, you shall hide them from the plots of man. You sheltered them in a booth from the strife of the tongues. You heard the voice of my prayers when I cried out to you. And it says, love, Yehovah, all you kind ones. In the King James, it says, love the Lord, all you saints. And he says, be strong. And let him strengthen your heart, all you who are waiting for Yehovah. So he's saying, if you're waiting, keep waiting. Keep waiting. He's going to show. It may seem like he's not going to come through for you. But he's going to show. Keep waiting. All right. Well, let's get to the Proverbs. See if we can find some wisdom in there. Admittedly, I have not pre-read uh, I'm getting turned to it here I have not pre-read Proverbs 31 typically I'll pre-read it uh, so I can kind of have my thoughts together before we start um, but we're going to do this one on the fly and we'll see what the Spirit says to us we're going to read it from the King James Bible uh, Psalm 31 alright let's begin verse 1 Proverbs 31 Oops, I'm turned, to the, I'm turned to the wrong place. I was getting ready to read Psalm 31 again. Oh, it's been one of those morning friends. Okay, here we are. Proverbs 31. The words of the king Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son? And what the son of my womb? And what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princess, princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink. And forget his poverty and remember his misery no more open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction open thy mouth judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil she will do him good and not evil in all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night 
and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her lines with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretched out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing in silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She open her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well into the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou exaltest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Well, some of you may remember the psalm. I forget what the technical term for the psalm is, you know, in seminary, but basically it's the psalm of a righteous woman. It's describing some, and, and obviously, it's it's a generalization generalization of what it looks like to be a virtuous woman. And so, some of you ladies out there, you're constantly working, and it may not be noticed or seen by the world. You're taking care of kids. You're doing laundry. You're making sure everybody's got food to eat and clothes on their back. You're going to the grocery store. You're going shopping and you're being frugal with the money. You're making sure that you're not overspending. You're managing the bill. I'm, de- ba- I'm basically just describing what my wife is <laughs> does most of the time. Making sure the bills are paid. Um, this is a picture of a righteous woman. Let me just read these, some of these qualities again. Who can find a virtuous woman? It's a a question. Who can find it? If you can, her price is far above rubies, right? In other words, it's a rarity. It is. You know, man, especially in the culture we're living in today, a virtuous, righteous woman who feareth the Lord. Talk about a rarity. Talk about something hard for a man to find. And so if you happen to have one, blessed are you. And uh, all the men need to uh, take a minute and say, wow, I am blessed because that's far beyond what I deserve. And there's no way you could ever find another woman like that because they're so rare. They're so rare. Here, here's a description. Her husband doth safely trust in her so that she shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night to give meat to her household and a portion for her her maidens. It's talking about how she's she's up late at night preparing things for tomorrow. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planted the vineyard. She girdeth her lines with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle go out, not out by night. She lay her hands on the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretched out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. It talks about her generosity, her kindness, her heart towards those who are in need. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. See, she's not worried that it's going to get cold because she knows she's done what is necessary to make sure there's warm clothes on her children's back. 
She maketh herself a covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. You see, she speaks good of her husband. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and she eateth not the bread of idleness. In other words, she's taking care of the things around the house. She doesn't have time to be lazy. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou exaltest them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Right? Beauty doesn't last forever, does it? Those of us who have been around a few years, we look in the mirror and we go, Wow, I don't look like I used to. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. In other words, her works are going to speak for themselves. You know, that's the end of Proverbs. We're done with Proverbs. We've covered all 31 verses of Proverbs. We'll be moving on to S. Uh, S uh, well, we've got Psalm and Psalms. Ecclesiastes, yeah, so we'll probably be moving into those books to accompany our psalms uh, moving forward. Well, there you have it, my friends. I pray in the name of Jesus that you've been blessed today. I pray that this podcast has blessed you. Uh, if it has, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, so please feel free to leave your comments below and uh, consider supporting this podcast. Um, if it's special to you and you, you enjoy it, Feel free to support it, but you certainly do not have to. This is free to all. There is no paywalls for people to get through in order to hear God's word or content on this channel. It's all volunteering. You can volunteer to support it. Um, but I'm not going to withhold videos. I'm not going to withhold teachings or anything from anyone. Because this belongs to God. And the word of God is to be shared, not to be hidden behind paywalls. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You'll see a video, you start watching it, and you're like, man, this is good teaching. And then it says, burp, okay, to finish the video, we need 20 bucks. I hate that. I hate that. I'm okay with people selling products. I'm okay with people taking donations. I'm okay with people, you know, feeding their families and teaching the Word of God. That's what I'm trying to do. But what I'm not okay with is from the, for the Word of God to be withheld behind needing behind money. I do not like that. And that's not what we do here. So it's free to all. You do not have to give a dime. Um, but if it's on your heart, feel free to do so. You can go to Scripture and Prophecy to do that, or the links are in the description below if you're watching YouTube. That's all I got for you guys today. I apologize for all the rambling. Uh, it's, it's one of those mornings. Peace and grace be with all of you. Till next time. God bless.